Good morning, Year 10, and welcome to our third week of the summer term. Um, and it's another poem today. Um, slightly more straightforward than some of the poems we've the three that we've done before. This is probably one that we'll end up learning by heart. Um, but before we go on to today's poem, I want you to write down three quotations from the last poem that we learnt, from now, from memory, and then for at least one of these quotations, do a quotation explosion to explore language and structure devices. And I'll give you eight minutes to do that. Our learning objective today is to read and analyse Love and Friendship by Bronte. Um, as ever, don't write in the learning objective, just write in the title, Love and Friendship by Bronte. I expect you spotted the, the, the pattern for these lessons today. They're quite um, um, rigidly laid out how it is that we do them. I'm hoping that's going to help as time goes by. Uh, for this lesson, you're going to need a printout of the poem. I will have attached that to the uh, to class charts, um, which for your annotations, that's your writings on the poem, a pencil and different coloured pens and highlighters. Okay, Love and Friendship is the title of the poem. As ever, we need to pay close attention to the, ti to the title of poems because um, they can sometimes be a bit obscure, a bit difficult to work out what's going on. And quite often the title will give you a, a huge um, uh, way into what the poem is all about. So, uh, so what do we associate with the words love and friendship? Pretty straightforward, really. An intense feeling or deep affection in contrast to a bond of mutual affection. Typically one exclusive of sexual or family relations. That is um, love and friendship. Love is the, an intense feeling of deep affection. Friendship is a bond of mutual affection, typically one exclusive of sexual or family relations. So it's friendship is outside of families. I mean, you can be friends with your family too, but friendships traditionally are outside of families. And love is a deep uh, feeling of affection for somebody else. What kind of tone are we expecting from a poem with this title? Something positive? Something that looks at two different types of love, perhaps? I think so. And it is as straightforward as you imagine this poem. It's looking, it's looking, and con looking at and contrasting uh, love and friendship and sort of evaluating, judging almost which one is the most important. And here is the poem. I will read it and uh, you will um, be uh, reading along with me. It's a nice, uh, straightforward one, this one. Love is like the wild rose briar, friendship like the holly tree. The holly is dark when the rose briar blooms, but which will bloom most constantly? The wild rose briar is sweet in spring, its summer blossoms scent the air. Yet wait till winter comes again, and who will call the wild briar fair? Then scorn the silly, ro silly rose wreath now, and deck thee with the holly's sheen that when December blights thy brow, he may still leave thy garland green. So read over it a couple of times, get a feel for it. Have a think about what it's about. Um, it's OK as ever not to understand every word or idea at this point. You're just trying to get a feel for the poem. So write um, responses to these questions in, uh, in full sentences. What is the mood of the poem? Who is speaking? Who are they speaking to? And how do they feel in your opinion? Um, the answers to that will become clear as we uh, as we go along, but I want you to uh, have a think about it um, because we're getting to the stage now where you need to be able to think about these poems yourself and, um, you know, just have a go year 10 um, and send me some work because then I can uh, uh, feed you back. I'm going to be emailing actually because um, I'm not getting a great deal of work and I'm, there may very well be sound reasons for that, but I need to know how it is I can support you with this because uh, we need um, to uh, get on top of these poems. Anyway, answer the questions there. Don't worry, don't worry. We just need to find a way of doing it. And here we are. There's not a clear speaker or audience here. We don't know really who's speaking. It's not very specific. Or, and the audience isn't um, very specific either. Perhaps a more generic statement. Generic just means a sort of broad statement about the different kinds of relationships we all have. The poem is about the contrast between love which in the eyes of this poem is seen as temporary, and friendship, which can be constant um, if it's looked after well. The extended metaphor of the plants representing each runs throughout the poem. Now, we know what a metaphor is, don't we? It's when we describe something by saying it is something else. Do you remember? The moon is a silver coin, is a metaphor. 
An extended metaphor is simply one that runs through a whole piece of work. So the extended metaphor here is comparing love and friendship to plants. So that's an extended metaphor. Put that into the uh, back of your books in, uh, along with the uh, other poetry terms that we've collected back there. OK, now uh, we understand the speaker's situation and the tone of the poem is to do with love and friendship and saying how friendship is perhaps um, more constant than love, which is a bit more of a flash in the pan. Um, so that's we need to work out how it is that she, Bronte, the writer, has put these across. Um, so how are they presented? We've got the extended metaphor we've talked about. Um, what use of language and punctuation can you see that um, brings out those uh, those feelings? Just um, pick uh, one uh, piece of language and one piece of structure and write a short paragraph for each saying how it um, how it uh, shows those feelings. So the punctuation could be, you know, those dashes causing hesitations or the enjambment. Remember when a line runs through into the next line, it causes it to flow. Does that um, uh, add to the feeling of friendship or love? Um, is there a regular rhyme scheme? And there is. Um, look at the different topics in each stanza. So write two paragraphs there, one for language, one for structure. I'll give you eight minutes to do, well, no, I'll give you ten minutes to do that. Right, now I'm going to annotate it. Now this is the key part, Year 10. Um, if you're struggling to annotate it yourself, annotate simply means writing, you know, next to the poem, um, bits about the language and punctuation that add to the effects. Um, you must copy down these uh, bits that, I'm, that I've done for you now onto your poems. Um, so on to the next slide and we'll do that. The poem has an ABAB rhyme scheme along with a rhythm. It's actually technically called iambic tetrameter. It feels very like a sort of twee verse inside a greetings card, um, which is interesting because the message is in contrast to this. So it comes across as something like you might potentially get in a, a Valentine's card, but the message is actually quite... Um, um, I wouldn't say it's harsh, but it's quite powerful. The message is quite powerful. The poem has three stanzas. The first two end with rhetorical questions. Always look out for rhetorical questions. Um, they always bring meaning to a poem. The third gives an answer that seems slightly threatening or warning. Copy that down into your books, Year 10. That goes under the title in your books. Right now, here are the annotations that I've done that need to go into your books. OK, so I'm going to read through them um, and then you're going to take uh, 20 minutes to copy these into your books. So starting at the top left hand side there, this is a language and structure analysis. So first of all, language, simile, a wild rose briar uh, that connotes beauty, romance, but also something wild and uncontrollable. Um, and then going across to the right, there's another simile, a holly tree associated with being evergreen. Immediate contrast to the rose image through colours of red and green, but also toned together. They are similar and yet different. The rose is love, which blooms once a year and is incredibly beautiful, but then disappears. A holly tree is evergreen. It's there all the year round. Um, rhetorical questions to pose query to audience and imply that friendship alone will be constant. Underneath that, sweet summer spring. Those three words uh, and scent, sibilance to enhance the saccharine, which means overly sweet idea of the rose. Sibilance, this is another word that can go into your glossary at the back there, is simply when you get uh, some words that together that all start with S. It's like alliteration, but with S's, that's sibilance. Then underneath that, the rose wreath is ridiculed as silly. So the sort of, it's almost considering love and it's temporariness to be silly and then you've got underneath that alliteration of blight's brow alliteration being words that um, start with the same letter to emphasize hardship and contrast it to the possibility of a garland green so this poem is coming out very much in favor of uh, friendship over love december is personified 
Remember how you remember what personification is? It's in the back of our book, so it's when you give something that isn't human human qualities. And then Holly is linked with times of joy and celebration, along with its connotations of Christmas, deck, sheen, and garland. And then in the final stanza, it, it, it gives us a final stanza, it becomes a warning um, about the temporariness of love. Above that, you've got reference to seasons to illustrate the temporary nature of the rose. And, as, and, and then again, we talk um, and it, about the extended metaphor. This imagery is used to illustrate the differences between love and friendship. The holly being dark when the rose bloom connotes friendship being forgotten when there is a new love. You know what it's like when you meet a girl or a boy and you suddenly don't pay any attention to your friends anymore. Um, so even um, as I, and I wouldn't expect you to necessarily understand all of that. Um, have a read of it, but make sure you get these uh, these poems annotated. Get this into your book, and you've got uh, 20 minutes to do that, Year 10. Now, with regard to the adding to the notes that have gone into your book, um, I want you to write down your ideas about this poem, and um, as importantly, my ideas that we've uh, that we've gone through in this presentation. Try and capture one idea of your own. Um, that's what we need to be doing at this stage. And this is a good poem to do it with because it's relatively simple. Um, you know, it's to do with love blotting out friendship when it arrives, but friendship being ultimately the constant that survives over the time. So in your notes, you must make reference to the speaker and their feelings and perspectives. Remember, we said the speaker is um, fairly vague. Um, it could really be any, anybody who thinks in this way. At least three quotations, some literary terminology, which is just a simile metaphor and so on. Um, one point you could make about language and one point you could make about structure. And consideration of the key themes of the poem. What are they? We've got loss, pain, desire, longing, nature, distance, isolation, confrontation, reflection, recovery, time and change. I think the, uh, the key themes to this poem are reflection. It's someone thinking back. It's going to be an older person thinking back on the differences in the value, different values of um, friendship and uh, love and uh, and time I think you could have reflection and time get those into your books and uh, then on to the next slide that shouldn't take you more than uh, 15 minutes and now it's time to uh, pick three quotes from this poem um, that you want to uh, that you want to memorize this is a, a relatively easy one to do so pick three learn three of them and it will be on the uh, do now next time. So have a lovely weekend, Year 10, and I will speak to you. Oh, no, I'm recording this on a Friday. It's going out on a Monday. Um, have a lovely evening, and I will uh, speak to you tomorrow.